Good morning. I get to say that this time because it is not morning, but I get to say it anyways. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to our Wednesday stream. It is a very solo J kind of day. As you may have noticed, there is no Jason and there is no Jen and there is no Jabe. It is just you and me, chat together forever in this wonderful why does jordan have space ducks i don't know what you're talking about i don't see any space ducks <clears throat> i'm just maybe priming some models ahead of time for a particular show that i'm going to be at tomorrow uh which is going to be super exciting and very exciting i said exciting twice because I'm tired. My brain's not working quite as well as it usually does. But hello, everyone. Ghost Hunter, Tony Boy, T. Schmidt, Lumberjack Tim, Paint Licker, Wad Tomato, Mo. what's going on? How are you guys all doing today? I hope you guys are excited for a fun and relaxing little stream today. And Game Delay, what's going on? Hello, all. Lone Warrior Baby J. It is. It is I. I am the Lone Warrior. I am doing a bit of airbrush prep before I get into painting some miniatures here. Okay, what the heck is happening with this silly little thing? I'm getting a little bit of splattering going on here. See if we can't get that fixed. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to LVO, but we are headed to Taos for some net snow sports and whatnot. Nice, very cool. Made me reprimer my Imperial Guard army. Oh no, come on, Tony. It wasn't that bad. Come on now. Lend there, Governor. Is that the new texture trainer? It is, I am Ray. Uh, I am prepping one for me to be painting at the show, which is exciting. Uh, although I realize that I need to do a little bit of clean. We're going to let that dry for a minute while I prime some other stuff. <clears throat> no, the new one is Space Jason Bounty Hunter. That is true. That is the upcoming one. Which I did get to see yesterday, by the way, and it is very cool. <clears throat> Jen is, in fact, fantastic. Uh, yes, Jen is, in fact, fantastic, but also Jen not quite here. She is also busy in a meeting with Jason right now. They are doing the whole, you know, we own a business thing and got to be... Doing some some very important work that I am here to entertain you during. So we're just going to throw in some primer on some stuff. And I'm going to decide what the coolest thing I have to paint is. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing a little bit more work on the... Fancy gold, not gold. Um, I'm going to paint gold on it. On the fancy Blood Knight. I kind of feel like doing a little bit more work on the Blood Knight today. What do you guys think? Blood Knight? Do we do Blood Knight? Or do we do more lizard action? Or do we do some... Magneto? 
or do we do some what we got what do we got what do we got we got um yeah we got our our cool gladiator model from arena rex that i can work on we got options but chat we got options so you just let me know what you guys are feeling like and uh We'll we'll talk it up. We'll have some fun. We'll paint some cool miniatures. All right, so that's done. That gladiator is pretty cool. Getting some some votes that are all over the place. I'm just priming these while you guys make a decision. You guys got to be vocal. You got to let me know. Which model will you paint hot pink and or plaid? Uh, neither. None of them, Ghost Hunter. That is not an option available to us all. We cannot do that. That is not an option. This is a great question. Well, it's maybe a great question, Mo, but it is not a question that will result in a good answer for you all. You end stream then? Wow. Paint Lurker, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. Just remember, when it comes around next time, and you don't get picked first for the basketball team, that that is why. You made fun of me on stream. And so, I do not get to pick you for, first for the basketball team anymore. You can just refuse to. Also, I refuse to end stream early. Because I want to be here and hang out with you guys. And I think Jason and Jen would probably prefer that as well. As it is my right. <laughs> Was it worth it, Paint Licker? Probably not. We need to find a streamer who will cave to our simple demands. I don't know what you guys are thinking, because Jason certainly was not caving to your demands before I got here. So I don't know where you guys got this idea. You never met him in the Mech Warrior days? Well, I mean, I knew him back in the Mech Warrior days, I guess. I was here during that. It depends on which Mech Warrior days you're referring to. Oh, way, 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 way back in the day. He's figured you guys out by now. He told me ahead of time to never listen to you guys. I took that advice to heart. I'll eventually win. I don't know about that, Paint Licker. You might be able to convince Jen to paint something pink on stream. But Jason and me? Nah.
The time before time, I believe the Im that implies he's old. <laughs> if you were alive during the time before time, then all time doesn't matter, right? Because if time didn't matter, then there's no concept of being old. So he's from before the time, the time when time began. Then we can say he's old. But he's, nope. <laughs> Good thing Jen and Slow aren't here to take the trolls. Hey, I can handle you guys. I've been around long enough to handle you nerds. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 game delay. You're saying WAD is reasonable? Oh my gosh. Bob, Big Bobzilla, I am in fact having a wonderful week so far. I've been bright and shiny every morning when I came in. Felt like I've been getting some good sleep. Um, albeit it is a pretty busy work week for us because we're about to head out for LVO. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, we're, we're having a good time. It's all good things, right? We're busy getting everything prepped and ready for LVO because it's going to be a great, exciting show. Jabe is busy getting the the van all put together. So he's unable to make it. And Schlubby is busy putting things in boxes for you guys who are going to be there. Who else? Is anybody going to LVO this year, by the way? Hoosiers, so I followed the layering skin tone tutorial from YouTube that Jason did, and holy crap, it came out so awesome. Yes, it did. Is that the one with um, Wonder Woman? Is that the Wonder Woman one that he did? Yeah, all the all the nonsense gets funneled directly to me. It's great. Oh, so it's a sumo-looking guy? Huh. Is it like a really old video or is it a relatively new one? Hmm. Do we keep the van down by the river? We keep the van somewhere, Mo, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. That would be a betrayal. I've been entrusted with knowledge of the van, and that, that knowledge will not leave me. <laughs> That's Baby J's port john personal use only. Man, can you imagine if people had, like, personal porta potties That'd be... Hilarious. Everyone got to customize their own. It sounds awful. But then, then you can't like walk into one and be like, man, all of these other people just made this smell horrible. You just have to deal with the fact that that smell is from you and you alone. This is the classy kind of stream. Hey, look, game delay. All of our streams are classy. I accepted that reality a long time ago.
Oh, so funny. Already got that done. All right, two more guys left, and then we're done with priming stuff for right now. Just wanted to get these out of the way so I didn't have to think about it. You got two kinds of wet? Holy cow. What's happening? That artist Amelia raiding with a party of 12. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, everybody. I'm dumping my peeps on you. What the heck? Well, welcome. Hope you guys are having a blast. Hope you guys had a good stream. Welcome, raiders. If you don't think if you think you don't like the bathroom as well, just have kids. They will inform you. <laughs> uh what's everyone? Spark minis, that artist Amelia. Hello. Camus, what's going on? <clears throat> Moose. Hello. James Irem. Hello. We're just getting started here today. Just finishing priming a model here really quick prior to LVO so I can get started on the fun stuff for the rest of the stream. We're limited on time today so I to get this all prepped. But that just means that we're going to have fun painting stuff for the rest of the stream. So I'm going to clean this out and we get started. Click varnish openly. What? Lick. No. That is not at all what that stands for. Paint liquor. <clears throat> and are we going to Adepticon? Yes, we are, Spark Minis. We most certainly are. Who approved this production without supervision? Uh, I did, because I'm in charge. There are no rules. Well, there are rules while I'm here. But they're the rules that I set, because I'm in charge. You must all fear my power. The power of the baby J. <laughs> what are you doing there? I'm a croak. Rules are pink marines. Nope. You're going to try and talk your gaming buddies into a Depticon road trip for a day? I mean, that sounds awesome. How far away are you, Hoosiers? Take over the world indeed. That is my plan. One stream at a time. They won't know what hit them. And yes, you absolutely should, because Adepticon is a blast. <laughs> nice try game delay you're not gonna make me sad enough to paint a pink marine it's not happening yeah nice try I saw where you were going with that couldn't quite stick the landing though 3.5 hours that's not too bad that's totally worth the drive if you've never been before, or if anybody who is going to be participating in the road trip has not been yet, it is 100% worth the drive. No doubt in my mind. I 
We do a little bit of cleanup on the bottom of this here before we finish priming. Let me get all these little little nubs off. It's a great use for the <clears throat> seam scraper, by the way. One of my favorite uses for it is to clean up all the support buildups, little support nubs on 3D printed models. drive six hours for Adepticon, but we stay all weekend. Yeah, that's not too bad. Man, it's tough for, for us when we were living back out in Seattle. It's, it's so hard to get anywhere. If you don't have anything that's in, like, Victoria or Seattle itself or in uh, Portland, it's, like, you can't really drive there. You have to, you have to take a plane. Adepticon's a great place to shop and to check out Golden Demon, yeah. Lots of really fantastic pieces get submitted every year. It's a very, very, very cool painting show. Nobody's sad painting a Barbie space marine. Maybe so. But, uh... But not I. I will not be doing that. Using a little bit of these little sanding sticks here. A little bit of sanding paper on them. Just cleaning up the, the bottom edges here. Not a huge fan of the location. Like the, the room that they put all the, the models in. All right, got a airbrush guy. This guy off. I'm gonna stick this on to my hand thingamabob. I'm gonna prime this up and then we're gonna paint. Get a little bit of black primer.
<clears throat> All right. That is, as they say, done. <clears throat> All right, this will be fun to paint at the show. I'm going to get that out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I need people to figure it out. What are we doing? We're doing Blood Knight. We're doing this guy. We're doing this guy. Or are we working on Lizard? What's what's the verdict, chat? And I know this is a really important decision for you all. Maybe the most important decision of the day. That mo none none of them are gonna be pink. <clears throat> That's the key. None of them are gonna be pink. What's up, Fire Arc? We're we're deciding on what Baby J is gonna paint today on stream. Wow, big Bobzilla. You guys really just let it let it fly when Jason's not here. Or Jen for that matter. I'm gonna tell you guys how bad or I'm gonna tell them how badly you guys have been misbehaving. <clears throat> What's up, gentlemen paints? Good day. Good day to you. I hope you are enjoying it so far. Yeah, you never behave for the babysitter in the same way as mom and dad. I am not just a babysitter. That's rude. God, you guys and the whole parents thing. <laughs> Fire arc, there is, there is in fact nobody here other than me. I am in control of everything today. Well, most things. I'm not con in control of the weather. That would be cool though. Weather control powers would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, Fire arc seems pretty reasonable for for now. Substitute teacher. And there went that. You tried you tried game delay. I appreciate the thought. You could turn the heat on here. So how many of you guys are dealing with snow right now? Everybody I know keeps on like sending me photos of 
all the snow outside of their houses with the crazy cold wave that's been happening. Anybody out there lucky enough to not have it? I am ready. The, the four models right on screen right now. Chibi Magneto, Lizard, a Blood Knight from uh, Age of Sigmar, or, or uh, our favorite little gladiator from uh, <clears throat> Arena Rex. You just got a little bit more snow. Nice. You're driving in it yesterday? God, Tim, I can't imagine being a truck driver in the middle of all a whole bunch of snow and ice. That sounds awful. All right, you know what? I'm going to leave it up to chance. <clears throat> we'll let fate decide. I have some dice here that we can roll to decide what we're what we're working on today. All right, so we have four models to choose from. <clears throat> Let me get them on screen again. All right, so we have two dice here. The the red will be these two. Jade will be these two. If Jade rolls higher than black, we're picking from the the two on the right. All right, we're picking from the two on the right. Which we're not doing because I don't want to paint lizard. So <laughs> we're not gonna do that. Alright, here we go. We're doing this one. Jade is him. Black is him. Alright, Blood Knight it is. <clears throat> I've had my eye on this guy to paint for a little while, so. We're going to work on them a little bit more. So the question is, what are we going to be working on? So I'm going to start painting in some of this like gold detail here. I think will be really cool. Uh, we're going to paint in this metal down here in the cloth. Ha! Panic bomb. Hello. The dude. 88. Blood Knight. Plaid on the horse. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to do some gold. I'm going to start with my favorite. Uh, not sweat, quite favorite, but let's go. Hmm. Yeah. We are going to go with a, hmm, do we want to go cold gold or warm gold? I'm thinking cold gold might work well. So we're going to do that. We're going to pick some bright gold. <clears throat> and we're going to mix in a bit of dark golden brown as our base. And we're going to find a good brush for this. There we go. 
Let me move all these brushes off for you. There we go. All right, so dark gold and brown and bright gold. This is going to be our base color. And we're going to build it up from there. So we're just going to base coat this whole area with the skull to make it that sweet metallic. You could use bronze for this. I'm using this as a base coat just because I like the coverage that you're going to get off of this. We're going for more of like a greenish gold on this instead of the rich red or not reddish but ri kind of the rich warm gold that you would get I'm not too worried about that sign and then we're getting Getting all the little details in here. Painting down into the recesses. Let's see here. What else do we want to make gold? We can make this gold back here. <clears throat> we could also do the the ridge, the like back ridge of this. For the the bit on the bum here, I think would be cool. So we're gonna do that in the in the gold as well. Yeah, you know, we can actually even do a test. Let's do a test. We can do rich gold on the back to see what that looks like. may or may not be a test for a, a unit of blood knights that i may or may not have always wanted to own and or build and paint Might have to do another coat on this. <clears throat> Testing one, two, is this thing on? What's up, Awkwardish? How's it going? Same gold color. Oops, got a little bit on the red.
Monument Shel Shelby. <laughs> Can you bring the bell the whole way to LBO? Please, no. God, I hope she doesn't. What a pretty pony. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Shlubby. Awkwardish Panda is building a cool golden demon entry. Do tell. I find this very interesting and would like to know more. Are they skeleton horses or bony boys? They're kind of a little bit of both. Because if you look at like the back legs on this guy, they're like horse, they're like horse legs. But the face is all bony. So I don't know. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Uh, also, I really like this green instead, so we're just going to do like that. The, the greenish gold. So we're just going to do that. Oh, that's too thin. Too thin? So when it gets really thin like that, I like to pull all the excess paint off. And I'm basically just taking it, soaking it up with the brush, and then I'm dabbing the brush on my <clears throat> paper towel over here to get all the excess moisture out. And then I'm bringing it back over and pulling it back. Good old Monument Schlebby. You're not dabbing, you lie again, Jordan. Hey man, I'm not lying. I have no liar tag. I cannot lie. I do not have the power within me. I can only tell the truth. <clears throat> Let me try. Ooh, no. I like the red back there. Oh, so like liar, liar. So fall off the bone. You ready to eat? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Rotting flesh is a common skin problem among zombies. There are several doc documentaries, in fact. It's true. They do have a big old documentary on how um, skin care for zombies is really big, important fad coming through the the social medias these days. It's very important. Zombies need skin care too. <clears throat> that is too dry. You'll absorb moisture in there. So, for this, we're going to want a little bit of black brown. And we're going to make a little bit of wash for all this gold that we just painted. Mixing 50-50 gold and brown and black wash. We're going to add a little bit of glaze and wash medium. Even mod zombies need moisturizer, indeed.
The other bit's gonna need a little bit to dry, I think. Working on building an FDM kit for Gaslands. Just ordered a rattle can of enamel primer for it. Oh, cool. <laughs> if I was a zombie, I wouldn't be caught dead without my moisturizer. I mean, to be fair, if a vampire was trying to eat me, I'd probably say, please stop biting me too. I am not here for your nutritional values. Your broken ribs are finally healing. It doesn't hurt so bad to sneeze. That's good. What's up, Twitch Summerlin? How goes it? All right, while we wait for this gold to dry, oh, we can paint a little bit of this gold over here. Now that this is dry, actually. Bring you some bone. Paint this skull on the horse. We're gonna darken that up a bit so that it doesn't feel like it's clashing quite as hard with the uh, the red. Same thing with this gold. <clears throat> We're gonna tarnish it a bunch. And yes, I know that the back half of this model is not painted. <laughs> I mean, Ghost Hunter, that is very clearly a skeleton face. Post office appears to have lost your monument order? What the heck? That's ridiculous. Sapo, I'm sorry. You should definitely have a conversation with them about that because that's crazy. Also, hello, Megalodon. How do you do? For future reference, I definitely would have painted this, um, all of this skin on the horse first, by the way. Just rearranging your basement, have to make room for the new toy arriving next month. Oh, that's awesome. Did you get the one that you wanted, Megalodon?
I suppose it is possible that the your uh, your shipment did get delayed as a result of the uh, the crazy snow issues around the the United States right now. It's entirely possible that that is the case, unless they told you that they couldn't find it, in which case they're that's their fault. You already have a popcorn machine? <laughs> Do you have a fancy movie theater for the popcorn machine and popcorn that it makes to be enjoyed in? I feel like that's the second half of that. We're like, if I have a popcorn machine, I have to have something awesome with which to enjoy the popcorn with. And what better than a movie theater? Run the same wash that we put on the front on the rest of the gold now that it is dry. <clears throat> I mean, come on, who doesn't have a popcorn? Uh, yeah, we, we, in fact, do not have a popcorn machine, Megalodon. Uh, much to our disappointment. But also maybe benefit, because it sounds like terrible, terrible time to clean it. Got the email, your texture trainer has shipped. Nice. Fresh set of brushes, excellent. Yeah, yeah, Megalodon. Jen, Jen would have uh would have been pretty wrathful when it came to the uh the whole <laughs> popcorn machine. <laughs> yeah, I've been married 20 years and I know that pain. No, thank you. <laughs> it's a good call. Good call. Yeah, there's a certain level where you're just like, this This is no longer worth the price of admission. And you got to be careful hitting that point. Baby J, have you gotten any games in of Legions Imperialis? I most certainly have, actually. Uh, when I was in Seattle for the the holidays, I played three full games. And we were playing 2,000, I believe. Jealous? I have not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely... Oh, it's a very different game. Uh, it, it is very different than the norm of like 
Warhammer 40k style game. Also, hello, Jade. Hi. Christmas Sushi. We got to play. You're darn right. We got to play Chris. I got to see good old Christmas Sushi today for the first time in some time, and it was very exciting. I was very happy. feel like ever since he uh he moved out of the office in here i haven't had an opportunity to see him he just he just left to go get some milk and never came back dano paints thank you for the sub welcome back for 62 months holy cow well, painting I'll stuff I'll you're painting throw stuff back my legs and my with stuff. Delight. also i want this handle back so i can Stick this guy on here. Much better. Throwing a little bit of wash over the bone here with a mix of uh, red gray and black brown. We're also gonna use this to shade some of the skin as well. Gonna paint the hooves in that color as well. Kind of a nice neutral color. I feel like works. All right. There we go, starting to dirty it back up, make it feel kind of you know, old and weathered instead of bright and shiny. The problem sometimes when you're painting gold is that if you uh, paint it too bright against other bright and shiny things, everything has to look bright and shiny. Cold and weathered instead of bright and shiny. That's me. We're actually going to do a little bit of a dry brush or get our DD1 here. Get that bright gold. Work it into the brush. We're gonna dry brush this over the skull here. And a bat swing on the front. have to wait for that to continue drying a little bit more there's some wet spots in here that I don't want to dig into and mess up the the finish just gotta be a little patient And I think we're going to do the cloth in black. Makes sense to me. 
Uh, where is my coal block? Christmas Sushi, if you are still here, I'm curious, how much stuff do you have built up for, uh, for legions? <laughs> Only one? Okay. Warmaster Titan and a bunch of small dudes. It's funny, when I first started playing that game, we kind of, me and a couple of friends that I was playing it with, uh, were under the impression that Titans were actually going to be really bad. Um, and I think that the, the smaller Titans are a little bit of a trap, but the big ones can be kind of a nightmare because the, they have a ton of hit points. So you have to dedicate a lot of turns worth of firepower into them, um, which you kind of need for other things too. Uh, but you also, um, they also can just target a bunch of things every turn. So they have the opportunity to like shoot that 600 points at like five or six different things. Yeah, Chris, I've played like three or four games now and I've got a pretty solid understanding of the game. Chuck the Mead Man, Baby J, any tips on painting white fur like a polar bear? Uh, okay, so let's let's think about this. So I would start with kind of media, a medium to light gray color. So I would probably start with, um, and I want it to be a little bit towards the blue, like, or, or brown. Because if you look at polar bears, they tend to be pretty dirty. Uh, they're not that, like, pristine kind of white color. They have a little bit of that kind of yellowish, uh, color to it so maybe i would start with something like uh maybe a light umber even and then i would build up no i wouldn't start with light umber i would start with hmm dark ivory maybe dark ivory might be a good starting point it's a little bit more neutral but it's still a little warmer and then I would build your other colors on top of this with dry brushes. Um, and then I would do some, some glazing in the shadow areas of the fur with cooler colors. So I'd probably do like dark ivory as a base and then maybe build up A little bit of like white blue on top of it. That might be too blue. I'd probably do. Honestly, you probably even just do ivory. That's bright ivory. And ivory. I would use I would use a lot of reference for one. I don't have a picture of a polar bear in front of me, so it's hard for me to to give you an idea. But you want to start from a brighter color. Uh, if you start from a darker color and you dry brush on top of that you're going to end up with like a weird like too dark base color uh and chris yes i have tried bane blades for li uh, i own six of them that are built that i used in every game uh that i tested while i was in seattle um I am not a hundred percent sure whether or not I love them or I think that they are too expensive to be honest with you. I own six and I will probably use them, but I have not played enough games to be able to tell if they are like amazing or not. 
Because they sure as heck do put out a lot of damage. Because they shoot a lot of guns. The, I think the big thing about that those models is they have a ton of point defense. So they're really good at killing infantry. Which is kind of weird because they're Bane Blades. They, they feel like they should have the big guns on them. But in reality, the, the Malkadors kind of just shoot better. And even the Lemon Russes to, to an extent. So I'm just kind of hitting every little tooth here. Give an individual a little highlight with the bone. Your bone is such a great color for painting bone. It's it's perfect in that hue. It's not super super dark and not super bright. Panic bomb stream messing up for anybody else? Uh it looks like it's pretty solid for us. We're at six hundred KB right now. Solid at thirty FPS. So we're not dropping any frames over here. So I I might try restarting your stream. If you're having trouble, panic bomb. Oh, it tanked for a minute. Weird. Bring everything back to this pure your bone color. Getting all the, the teeth again. Kind of doing some rough blending with this this color to create a little bit of texture on the bone. You guys can see that nice little bit of texture in there. Really cool. No, no pink. It is still chugging. Stream's doing fine. I think your brain's just a little messed up from all that pink you're trying to get me to paint. <sighs> will not bow to the will of chat. Oh, my allergies are so bad right now. What the heck? It hiccuped for a second, but it's been an issue on Twitch's end all day. Thanks for the heads up, Awkwardish. <clears throat> First off, rude. Secondly, fair. Painting up some uh, red gray onto the the back of the legs here, building up a little bit of that kind of like pale highlight. Red gray is such a good color for like a diseased or kind of dying or dead flesh. It's kind of got that like eerie warmth to it but it's still super pale. 
It's a nice value because it's not super bright, but it's not super dark. It's a nice mid-tone value. Red gray is an unsung MVP for you. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's a color that I don't use super often because I don't find myself in situations needing this particular hue of hue of color. But when it's really good, it's like the driving force behind a recipe for me. I find um, it's like that kind of it's that niche color that you don't use as often. But when you do, it's like super important to the recipe. <laughs> I would like to point out, had Jason not caved to chat, none of this would be happening and you wouldn't have, ha have this ass awesome job. What are you talking about, Mo? Are you, are you saying that you guys are responsible for me being here? Jeez. Don't forget, I expressed a bunch of love for you yesterday, Mo. Don't forget. I thought it was Jen's fault. Jason keeps on telling me it's Jen's fault that I'm here. Deadbeat, your face hurts? Why does your face hurt? Awkwardish, you are, in fact, the good child to chat. <clears throat> you're sick? Why does your face hurt if you're sick? Science? Is, oh, I guess that makes sense. Mucose? Any considerations for color schemes at larger scales? You're about to start your first statue scale mo model? Dano, um, what model is it? So I can got, kind of get a sense of like what, we're, what you're working on. Because there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of approach it. Um, from, you know, it, typically you don't want to apply a ton of highlights and a ton of shadows. Mogan Hexwitch from Loot Studios. Interesting. Um, yeah, so so a couple of things to consider. Uh, when you're painting stuff at that scale, you don't want to add a lot of um, highlight and shadow, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the reason for this is that at the scale that you're painting at, light interacts with the miniature or, or the statue in a different way than it would interact with a miniature at something like this scale, right? At this scale, light doesn't play on the model in the same way that something the size of a statue does. When you have a statue, light will actually interact with it more like it would interact with something more in the kind of natural world. So for me, for example, I'm a full-size full human. Light is going to interact with me in the traditional sense that you would expect light to work. Um, so you'll, you'll have cast shadows from parts of the model where you won't really have cast shadows on models of this size. Uh, just because they're so small, uh, they're, they just don't really do it very well. Um, so that cast shadow is going to do a lot of that extra work for you uh, that you would normally, excuse me, that you'd be normally um, painting in on a model of a smaller scale. Um, highlights are much the same way with the exception that you do want to add a touch of contrast in the form of, of, of highlights. Now, 
this can be in the form of just a very, very subtle dry brush over some like cloth textures to give it um, a little bit of brightness in areas of like on top of my shoulder, right? Where, where it's bright up here from the light sitting it. You can add a little bit of like dusting bright kind of uh, texture with a, with a nice soft dry brush. And then most of the rest of that, you're gonna leave the same. Um, you can do a little bit of, of manual adjustments for, for light and shadow, but I would start with your base coats first. Um, get used to doing a lot of masking because masking is gonna be your friend. Use a lot of that masking tape and, and putty and stuff like that. Um, just get nice clean lines. <clears throat> And uh, and I think you'll you'll be really successful with it. <clears throat> Age John, <clears throat> we are using some red gray. Uh, we've been using red gray on the the mid tone highlights on the kind of pale horse flesh, right? And I'm gonna bring it up with a little bit of pale yellow, or maybe even a little bit of khaki, actually. Khaki might be good. Khaki's gonna be that brighter color. It's gonna bring a little bit of that kind of sickly green into it. We need a how to paint tutorial on, on what part, John? <laughs> Game delight. You know what? When you think about it, red gray is really kind of pink. I'll take it. Yeah, you will take it, Game Delay. That's all the pink you're gonna get. Uh, color selection. A paint tutorial on color selection in general. <laughs> Baby Dre's junk of power and I'm telling on him. Who are you going to be telling on? There's nobody here for you to tell. I have the power here. Yeah, Age John, I, I'm happy to help kind of with whatever you want. I'm just trying to get a sense of exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, different techniques. Yeah, we, I mean, we have a lot of shorts that go over some of the more simple kind of recipe stuff. Um, in fact, this red armor that we did, uh, or that I did on this uh, on this model, uh, was a short from about a month ago. Uh, I think we did that as the last short of December, I want to say. Um, it was really fun to do. It's this, like, nice, super candy apple red armor. Um, and then for... As far as like other techniques and tutorials, we have a lot of them on our website, um, which I can send a link to. Oh, thank you, Awkwardish, for slapping up a link in there. Um, Awkwardish just went ahead and sent out a link to our YouTube channel, John. Uh, there's a 
yeah, there's a ton of videos on our YouTube, um, including all of our past streams where we do a lot of tutorials on how to do stuff. Um, there's also our Discord is a great place to get information as well. Uh, if somebody can throw a link in the chat to the Discord, because I don't have a keyboard over here. Um, yeah, we have all the methodologies on the website and on the Discord as well. Um, if there's anything in particular that you want to have us show you on stream, just let us know. We have models around here that we can demo pretty much anything on. If you want to learn how to, how, how to paint skin, I've got a model over here that I can show it to you on. If you want to learn how to paint non-metallic metal, there's plenty of stuff that I can show you to do that on as well. <laughs> and don't listen to these guys, because they're a bunch of... <laughs> pink and plaid loving <laughs> jokers. <clears throat> I don't hate pink so much, Schlebby. I do not hate pink at all. In fact, the it, what I am doing is I am taking chat's fun away from them by not giving them what they want. Uh, except for John, because John's pretty cool and is asking legitimately good questions. Uh, whereas everybody else is just like, paint it pink, <laughs> paint it pink, paint it pink. <laughs> so we have three washes uh, right now, John. We have a, uh, <clears throat> we have a, oh gosh. <clears throat> we have a flesh wash. Uh, we have a black wash. And we have a brown wash, which is around here somewhere. I think it's this. Yep. And we have brown wash. These are already pre-mixed right out of the bottle. So you can just use these and throw them on your miniature. Um, I can use a little bit of this brown wash right now. I'll throw a little bit onto my palette right here. And this stuff is, is basically all you need to do is pull it out of the pot and throw it on your model. And it's going to seep down into those recesses and create dark lines in all those crevices of your miniatures. And then you can paint on top of it when you're done if you want to brighten things back up or if you want to leave it like that, you can. And then if you want to make your own washes, oh, you're talking about using the medium? Yeah, so I was about to get to that as well. So if you want to make one here, let's see here. What can I do? Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, great. We have a, a sweet yellow marine right here. So if I wanted to make a wash, to make like a brown wash, right? But kind of like a burnt sienna wash. I could take a little bit of our burnt sienna. I'll flip this around here. Oh, actually, I'm going to grab a little mixing container. And we're going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. It's a little zoomed in. And we're going to put probably two drops in here. Come on. Oh, geez. Yeah. One drop, two drops. <clears throat> and then we're going to take our glaze and wash medium. I have right here. And then I'm going to mix, uh, we're probably going to put eight drops in. This will be a three to one. Uh, let's do, let's do four to one. So if we're doing four to one, we have two drops in there. Now we need eight, eight drops. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, those drops are a little bit small, so I'm probably going to add four more. Some of our dropper lids, because our, our bigger bottles have a little bit better, different dropper lids, uh, you get a slightly smaller droplet than you do with these twist top lids. 
So uh, I needed to add a little bit more just because the drops are a little bit smaller. And then what I want to do after this is I want to mix some uh, some more water into it. So I'm going to mix a little bit of water, not a ton. You can start with whatever you're comfortable with. Here's my mixing brush. Oh, there it is. We're going to grab a dirty little mixing brush. And we're going to mix this on up. So the idea is when you take the glaze and wash medium and you mix it into one of these standard opaque acrylic paints that we make, it makes the paint more translucent. So it's not going to be as opaque as it normally is, right? If you have regular burnt sienna, it's pretty opaque right out of the bottle. It tends to look like this, right? So the glaze and wash medium is a good way to thin that down. And this is a pretty thin wash consistency. You probably didn't need to add as much water to this, but you can play around to find whatever you're the most comfortable with. Um, but these are the ingredients that you're going to want. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to put that dark color into the recesses where I want it. to get the darkness into those recesses. I'll do that here. In the back here, this is a great example of where to throw the wash. The back of the knees, and do it in these little crevices, right? And these have recesses, so you can kind of wipe away the top part if there's a little bit on the top. Here's a good example on the back of this backpack. I can kind of just flood the back here with that wash. And if I don't want it over the surface like that, I can take a damp brush with no paint on it. And I can just try and remove some of that excess wash. But this is how you make really good washes. And the nice thing is the benefit of having the black and the brown and the, the flush wash is all of the mixing part of this is just done for you. Um, so if you, if you can use these colors for what you're trying to do, they work great, but having the uh, glaze and wash medium will let you have the flexibility to do other washes of other colors. So if you wanted to do like a blue wash, we could mix up a blue wash uh, for like sky blue, things like that. <clears throat> that makes sense, John? Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to adjust and answer different questions if you like. Uh, Boneyard. Baby J painting a 75 millimeter figure Caucasian after my black primer. What is the best base coast to use next on a face? Like a, so like typical, like Caucasian, are you going like pale or are you going like tanned flesh? Um, cause I mean, Caucasian's a pretty wide range of hues. Um, that ranges from like pretty dark to pretty light. Seems a bit tyrannical. <clears throat> Tan flesh. Okay. Uh, Monument Schlebby. Jordan, I'm going to make you do a special special Schlebby challenge. Oh my God. Special Schlebby. Tongue tied month challenge for February where you have to use pink as the main color. Take it up with HR. <laughs> Just let me. <laughs> you can have that conversation with, with the dog. <clears throat> oh, 
Of course you would be down for the schlebby challenge. It's me having to paint pink. <laughs> Can we save it for after Adepticon so you'll have time to participate? <laughs> it's your birthday month, so I'm not allowed to say no and make me sad. Uh, when is your birthday again, Schlebby? I need to make sure that I don't show up to work that day. <laughs> I've gone mad with power. Fear my wrath. <laughs> Baby J, I warned you we'd win. Uh, well, you know, you say that. But I don't see a whole lot of winning happening. Uh, and Boneyard, uh, let's let's talk about your tan flesh. Um, let's. I have a cool model here that we can talk about doing some some flesh colors on. February thirtieth. You almost aren't even making it because that doesn't that date doesn't exist, Ghost Hunter. Dang, Schlebby, what the heck? Pink Challenger off the cookie list? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, hold on. Jade, I'm not on the cookie list anyways. How is this going to hurt me? <laughs> Pink Challenger off the cookie list. Oh, goodness. The cookie list is for winners, Baby J? You're not on the cookie list either, JP Gray. All right, Boneyard, are you still here? The The question was it for painting tan flesh over black base coat specifically? Because we can go over that. Yeah? Yes, you're here, or yes, that's the way you wanted it. the whole company oh no i can't i cannot do that to my friends jade wow you guys are really really good and good at wielding your power over me this is a man with nothing to lose <clears throat> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna prime over this just for you boneyard to make the rest of chat really mad. This will be a little bit bigger than your 75 millimeter model, by the way, uh, Boneyard, but this will be at least a good sense of how I like to build up my skin tones over black. All right. I want to let it be known that I did this for a member of chat, by the way. 
not for my own personal preferences. <clears throat> Doing it for you, Boneyard, because I got your back. So a couple of things that we're going to be thinking about if we're doing tan flush. Um, for tanned skin, I really like to use um, warm flesh and dark warm flesh. Um, I find that they're really, really fantastic colors for building up that warmth that you're looking for in, in a tanned skin tone. I need my own show. This is my show. I am... <laughs> I am the leader of my own show. It's the Baby, Baby J show. Need a, need a fun intro, guys. <laughs> he literally has it right now. Also, welcome back, Deadbeat Artist. I hope you are enjoying your... Very enjoyable, I assume, chicken soup. Which sounds really awesome, by the way. Chicken noodle, like, some really, really nice chicken noodle soup. Sounds amazing. Jason isn't here more singing. What are you talking about, Slayer Street? We sung yesterday. Jason and I duetted a song yesterday on stream. You missed it. We sang. More songs from Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, Slayer Street. It, I don't know how, how far into stream yesterday it happened, but it definitely happened on stream yesterday. He was in the producer chair. He gave me an opportunity to sing a song. I couldn't think of anything, so I didn't. And he was like, you gave up your opportunity. And I was like, give me a song. <clears throat> and then he started singing a song that I knew. And I was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> uh, I think it was actually before Slayer Street. Because we ended the stream on a ton of Star Trek talk. It was like two and a half or three hours in. <clears throat> Don't worry, Slayer Street. It is on the internet. It, it, it is there for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Baby J's improvised love song was the best. You should have seen the look on Jason's face. He about died. <laughs> Alright, Boneyard. Here we go. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focused on, on building initial values with different hues of color and values of color. So let me switch around my palette so we can get a fresh clean side. Let me grab a bit of dark worm flesh. Let me get warm flesh. <clears throat> And then let's see here. We can do some, some dark flesh to start off in our deep shadows. And then we're going to need something kind of in between that. <clears throat> so let's do, do like a burnt orange or something. Oh, we do advanced, advanced flesh tone. I like advanced flush though. All right. So <clears throat> some things to initially think about are 
where where is my highlight going to be from? I really like the idea of we can kind of do it from this this angle right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our bright color. Not our brightest color, so this is going to be our advanced or our dark warm flush. And we're going to throw it into that area where we want the highlight. So you're kind of like building out where you want the highlights to be right now. It's going to be on this side of the nose, along the bridge of the cheekbone, and over. It's going to be kind of inside this part of the, the lip, down here to the chin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our advanced flush advanced skin tone and then we're going to paint that mid-tone area in and this doesn't have to be perfect your first go around this is going to be kind of your initial sketch right you kind of want to just like lay in your color where you want it to be. Hey, somebody likes us. Want some of that darker color in there. Darker color underneath the nose. Follow this along down here. Then we're going to take our darker color, the dark flush, and we're going to throw that into those darker areas. And it's okay if this blends a little bit. We want a little bit of that anyways, because we're going to blend this all out eventually. <clears throat> but this is just a sketch. So we're going to go back in with our warm flush, or our dark warm flush. Pull a little bit more of that refinement out. And this is almost kind of like a like a wet blending exercise as well, because I'm mixing this into some of the paints. You'll notice I'm getting kind of some nice in-between colors when I do it this way. But you can kind of see the areas where I'm bringing it out, right? So it's going to be this this top part of the head. And then this area on the right underneath the eye sockets is always a good one. Want to hit the bridge of the nose as well. <clears throat> we're going to take some of our advanced skin tone, or advanced flesh tone, and we're going to bring back some of that mid tone warmth that we lost. I'm going to make sure that some of the 
ridge of the eyebrow. And where these tear ducts are. Getting that warmth in there. Hello! We have a special guest. They tried to get me to do it, and I didn't do it, Jason. Do what? The bad thing. The bad thing? The bad thing. What is they, the bad thing? They tried to get me to do the bad thing, and I didn't do it. What's the bad thing? You gotta get me a man in the dark. Paint, paint in pink. Do you want I'm, me to... A man in the dark. Man in the dark. They tried to get me to paint pink. Oh. And plaid. I did neither of those things. What have you done? Uh, I painted a bunch of this guy. <laughs> I was like, you couldn't have just painted that guy's face. No, no, I painted this guy. Did all the, the gold and the, the bone and the, the skin on this guy. Uh -huh. And then doing a little bit of a tutorial on how to paint uh, some skin tones from just a black base coat. Oh, yeah. Um, and quickly establishing yeah. your highlights and shadows with color as a sketch before going back over them and, and refining everything. Awesome. So He has black lips. He does. He doesn't really have lips. They kind of end in a sharp point in the way that the model is sculpted, which is very odd. Um, yeah, there, it's, it's kind of a weird sculpt. So is that teeth there? He has teeth in, in between, yeah. Oh, okay. So he just has, like, paper-thin lips. lips. Yeah. Very strange. Yes. Very strange. <laughs> Silly goth kid <laughs> with his black lips. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hi. Hmm. I'm over here in the dark. I forgot to turn the light on. <clears throat> he was basically tyrannical, but it looks good on him. Baby yeah. Jay was a tyrant? <laughs> They like saying that. There's certain things I just have a hard time believing. That may be one of them. <laughs> that I was a tyrant? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a tyrannical person. I can... Okay, so I've seen the way he treats people when he's gaming with them, so I can kind of see it. What do you mean? I've seen you act, interact with Paul and Jacob. Well, have you met Paul and Jacob? You kind of have to meet them at their own game. <laughs> also true. <laughs> you, can't, you can't let them run over you. Also sort of true. Yeah. He did call this his stream. I mean, when he's solo, you got to give him some leeway. Like, he was literally dead solo today. Uh-huh. I was like, hey, you got to do the thing on your own. We got a finance meeting a finance meeting today um, from 1230 to 330. And, uh, and so he was like, okay. And I was like, Gabe can produce. And Gabe's like, I can't produce. And Jen was in the meeting. And so we were like, uh, Shelby can't produce because Shelby's doing left-handed brushes for everybody. So, uh, you know, I guess it's Baby J. And Baby Gabe J's went so far as to put a meme up of SpongeBob drawing faces on his fingers. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got all my friends. <laughs> oh, yeah, that meme was funny. <laughs> all of my friends are here. He did I a should've... maniacal laugh and everything you did? <laughs> oh, he's horrible, ain't he? <laughs> he's also going to be solo painting at LVO. I mean, mm -hmm. there'll be other people in the booth, but he's going to be at LVO, man in the fort by himself. I'm not going. Yep. This is a big step for us, folks. It's true. Jen and I, mom and dad, are giving the kids the keys to the car and saying, go have fun. We're basically, it's like the reverse of mom and dad going on vacation and leaving you home alone. Yes. It's that you're, we're allowing you to go on vacation, vacation alone. And we're staying home alone. <laughs> yeah. So this could go one of two ways. <laughs> it's going to be either great. <laughs> this could go one of two ways. Or it's going to be bad. Wow. Jason is quitting conventions. No, I'm going to go to Adepticon. Um, I am going to Nova most likely. Um, I will probably go to Gen Con for business, but I will not be manning the booth at Gen Con, I don't think. I mean, I'll probably drop by, obviously. But my goal is to go to the shows in a capacity of interacting more with the community in, you know, possibly like doing classes um, and then business meetings. <clears throat> Which is, I mean... At a bunch of the shows is all I do anyway. Yes. There are some shows where I actually man the checkout register and, and you get to talk to me there, but that's become few and far between lately. Um, 
this is just one where we're we're letting the crew see if they can if they can do it, which we know they can. So I, I got faith. We got a good crew. Who's your favorite chaperone, and why is it Philip? <laughs> Philip's great. Philip is awesome at shows. All these guys are great at shows. Baby Jay's great. Gabe's only been to one. Uh, Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Gabe, our our wonderful illustrious uh, Jabe, went to one show, and now is the band leader. We put Gabe in charge of shows. So he's basically Julie, the cruise director. And Gabe, uh, Gabe, between Gabe and Jordan, they kind of put everything together, and then Phil and Schlebby are going to do all the work. <laughs> Sounds great to me. Gabe, do you hear that? We're taking a day off. That's nah, also not true. <laughs> I am a liar, by the way. He's like, sink or swim, bub. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a big fan of Las Vegas. Um, I, I do, I would like to go to LVO. Um, unfortunately, I have so much going on at the office right now that the best I could do is maybe fly out on Friday afternoon for Friday night and then stay for Saturday afternoon and fly home. That is still an opportunity that might happen. I am not committing to that. So we'll see. <clears throat> the love booth. You got him singing for two days in a row? It Holy is cow. It's exciting and new. Come aboard. We're expecting you. The love boo. There you go, Deadbeat. I did that for you. Gabe looks at what's going on and says, I got this. Crying child, grab that painted model. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Gabe is a fearful of nothing. Do you like, okay, so if, if you think Gabe has a nightmare, what is Gabe's nightmare, Jordan? Oh. Uh, let's see here. What do you think he would wake up from and go, I just had the worst nightmare. And you'd be like, you would fill in the blanks of what was in that nightmare. What would it be? Do I give the real answer to this or do I give the funny answer to this? Yes. <clears throat> Christmas sushi paint gluing rocks to all of his models. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's too easy. He's so used to that. That doesn't even scare him anymore. Uh, I don't know. I think... Um, you keep seeing Isaac know. giving the two gun fingers now. It's Shelby. He's afraid of his sister. No. No. That's most definitely not the case. No. <clears throat> Incorrect. I'm not that scary. Shelby is not that scary. Yes, well, she is. But only to me. To you? Everybody else seems to think she's great. Shelby is great. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell something funny about Shelby. <clears throat> so Shelby stopped listening. Um, so yesterday was Shelby's one year anniversary lunch and we took her out and she took us to a Postino. We always let people choose their restaurant. So she chose well. We went to Postino. We had a great lunch, came back. Um, and then today we pulled her into the office, um, into my office with Jen and I. And she, she comes in and sits down. And the first thing I say, I say is I look her deadpan in the face and I say, so... Unfortunately, we were a little disillusioned with some of the things you said at lunch yesterday. And I told totally Oh my god. I totally straight faced it. Oh my god. So if you want to know what Shelby's nightmares are made of, I can tell you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. She's like my heart dropped to my butt. <laughs> oh. Got him. Oh my god. I was like, got him. Got him. Working here is not always all it's cracked up to be. Let me just tell you that. Because if you have to deal with me, there's a chance you get stuff like that. I got to keep you on your toes. Right? Oh, gosh. Right? That's brutal. 
Shelby, I'm sorry. I saw all the color drain out of her face and immediately was like, I'm kidding. It's, it, Jen was like, he's kidding. <laughs> he's kidding. And she was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of horrible sometimes. Uh, this is a very odd sculpt. It, it really is. Because of the way his his lips are pulled back around his teeth. Yeah, it's like he's doing the. Uh, yeah, he's he's, like, he's, he's the uh, this. Yeah, the. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, and the nose is very strange. The brow to nose to chin sculpt is very strange. Yeah, he's ve- he's got a very narrow, very long face. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of depth from front to back. Yeah. Like his head's pretty deep. Right. Like deeper than I feel like it normally would be. That proportion be. is okay. It's the not jawline, horrible. The jawline's weird. The nose is weird, right? And it's really the eyebrows because the eyebrows coming out as far as your lower mandible is is strange. <laughs> the human skull typically yeah. doesn't work that way. It's very interesting. JP Gray, you feel like that would be an actual conversation and I would fire you? I let Jen do all the firing because she likes it. Jen likes to ruin people's lives. So what you're saying is, if I'm ever in a room by myself with Jen... Careful. Say nice things. Yeah, be very careful. No, Jen's like... Jen hates, as do I. We are horrible as business leaders because we value people too much, I think. And I never like having to, to be like, all right, here's the deal. Sometimes I get pushed to that level, but I never enjoy it. And it's funny because when I talk to business owners who are in that, you know, I don't want to say they're highly successful or anything, but, you know, that like the things that bother me don't bother them. And I always want to know, like, how do you just treat that like water off a duck's back? You know, and, and it turns response? out they're just people I would never be <laughs> you know, because okay. I'm like, I can't do that to people. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very curious to see what their response would be to that question of like, how do you how do you do that? Game delay asked, did anything come to mind that you said at lunch, Shelby? Like, did you think, ooh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> she was like, I, I kid, it was almost, and we, had a, we had a wonderful lunch, which made it probably horrible for her. She's back to loving me, though. She knows it was just a joke. Keeping her on her toes. Making her pay her dues. He emailed customer service to tell them Jordan was a tyrant. You're expecting a termination soon? We're going to terminate you as a customer? I don't think that's the way that works. <laughs> Technically, you guys are the boss. <clears throat> right? I only have one boss, and that's Jen. But technically, you guys are the boss. Because you can fire us with your wallets. Which is very powerful. Which is why you're our best friends. JP Gray says, we all own Monument? No, I just said you're the boss. The boss does not always own the business. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> Although after the meetings I have to have all the time, I might just give it to somebody. We're going to hold a raffle. <laughs> We're going to hold a raffle? <laughs> Can you imagine holding a raffle to give away the business? Oh, God, no. How many tickets would you have to sell? Like, you may be able to sell enough tickets. to. I wonder if anybody's ever done that. To, to buy the business? I'm interested to know now. Somebody Google if anybody's ever raffled off their company. Like, if, you sell, if we sell X amount of tickets, we will raffle it off. Oh, God. If we don't sell all enough tickets. It's like Kickstarter. If you don't sell enough, nobody pays. Oh, jeez. But if we, if we get a million tickets sold, then we raffle the business off. And, like, one person for, like, five bucks wins, like, a, you know, a $10 million company or something. like. That. <laughs> Shelby, have a horrible. wonderful time Thanks. at LVO. Again, if you need anything, oh my God, or if four. anything comes up, you guys contact us. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys are going to LVO, make sure to stop by and give Shelby a hard time. Yep. She will ring the bell. I will. I'll ring so hard. <laughs> I want video of you ringing the bell, by the way. Okay. All see right. You, see you tomorrow, Shelby. Have fun, girl. That was Willy Wonka's play. You are correct. You are correct, except it wasn't. Well, I guess it was, right? It was, it was a, that's exactly what Willy Wonka was. Now that I think about it, 
because the raffle ticket was the millions and millions of people that bought millions and millions of chocolate bars to get golden tickets. Oh, yeah. Right? It wasn't a raffle per se. You didn't buy raffle tickets. Well, you bought product. It and also inside wasn't... the product was the opportunity to come to Willy Wonka's factory. Right. So we could do golden tickets or golden agitators or something. Golden agitators. You know? That's amazing. And, and we just hide <laughs> one per every like million bottles, you know? And we do them sequentially. You don't do them all at once. You do like every million bottles of paint that come off the production line. You put a gold agitator in one. And all of the people that get gold agitators by the time you've done X amount of millions of bottles of paint, then, then you bring those people here, you kill 90% of them, and the one that's left, the, the king of the hill at the end gets the company. I mean, that's the way they did it in the movie. Dude, Jen and I would fly off in an elevator for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that movie. <laughs> you never fired anyone, but you yelled at a lot of people in the Marines, Ghost Hunter? We were talking about it the other day because, you know, uh, uh, like, has anybody been yelled at here at Monument Hobbies, right? Because, you know, somebody makes a, 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 a statement that, you know, like, I don't like being yelled at. I'm like, I don't think we've ever, like, Kyle was like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody yell in this entire office. I was like, you know what's funny? I'm the only one that's been yelled at by an employee. Oh, yeah. I got yelled at by an employee here. And that's the only time anybody's ever really yelled at Monument Hobbies is I got yelled at. For the record, it was not me. It was not Jordan. That person is no longer with us. But oddly enough, not because they yelled at me. That is true. I, was, I felt like I handled that very well. I think you did too. I pulled them aside and I asked them if there was something they would like to discuss with me because that was not how we like to act. And they felt bad and it was... We got over it. They eventually left anyway, but... You ran a $200 million business and the most valuable part of your business boneyard where the people ever get to like firing people or not hurting, you need to quit. Yeah. I mean, I, I am on that side of thinking, right? If you ever find it enjoyable to terminate people, you need to rethink your life. <laughs> because no matter what, even bad employees have still got lives and still have things going on in their life that are probably leading them to not be able to perform the way that they want to or that you need them to and all that. And I think, you know, it, it would always be better in a situation where you could kind of work with people to figure out all that stuff beforehand. Big companies just can't do it, right? You don't, can't have enough people in place to pay that kind of attention, which sucks. But we're a small company, so we can, we at least try. We don't do the best job of it all the time. We get so busy, but we try. I think you guys are really good about it. Furious Jade. There is no Furious Jade on this one. This is all skin tones galore. It's true. Kind of refining <clears throat> those areas where we want the highlights to be, making sure that the values are kind of in the right spot. You, you give them yell expressions and then speak quietly. It puts the person on edge real quick. I can see that. Sometimes when people expect you to yell and you don't is the it's, most impact you could worse. have. Yeah, it's even worse. Right? And I'm not talking about when people are trying to goad you into yelling, although that could probably count too. But it's I think that, that that saying of the, you know, the the wrath of a gentle man, right? Oh yeah. Like you you, ha you find somebody who's really nice all the time, and when that person is angry, there is a problem. Because that that person is not the type of person to get angry about things. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so there's a serious issue. Right. Jabe! Sneaking about. Like staring in weirdly in the door. Yeah. Come in here. Oh, don't walk away. So he goes around. <laughs> we have two doors into the studio. One of them leaves out into the lab where we do all this of our guy. paint mixing and where all my comic books are. Yeah. And then, oh, and then he comes back. What, what, are, you, what, what are you doing, Jabe? Get in here. Jabe is a very odd man. Very odd man. Here he comes. Get in here. Hey, Gabe, is the van in the garage? It is? Okay, cool. Hello. Man or boy? Hello. I think so Gabe is a man boy. Man boy. Gabe is a man boy? It is man boy Gabe. Mm -hmm. He's a man. He is a boy. He is Gabe. He makes you look very short. 
Because I am short by comparison. I'm not short by comparison. <laughs> turns out Gabe's pretty tall. Gabe's out. Turns out Jabe compared to Jabe is not short. How tall are you, Gabe? 6'3". Gabe's standing on yeah, two phone books right now. And I'm also standing on... No, I'm standing on phone, but it's not phone books. I'm standing on phone as well. So... <laughs> Jordan's I short. I, I, also really do, I do lean a lot into the table. <laughs> <laughs> lean? This is, this is me standing straight. You had an old boss that was adverse to firing people, but mostly because he was a coward. One time he called a guy while he was on vacation and left a message on his machine telling him not to come back. Oh okay, gosh. so that's the opposite end of the spectrum. you got to handle your business, right? You don't have to like it, but you've got to be able to do it. We have, been blessed. we have been nice. blessed with a great crew. We have very little turnover, and every time that we lose somebody, it really hurts. Jen and I talk about it for months. Um, Sometimes it has to happen, you know. You yelled at people in teams when you were working on the COVID hotline because their incompetence was uh, messing with people's health care and they would call me and yell at you. You would never have guessed Gabe is taller than you. Aren't you like four foot six? Dang, that's fired. Gabe the kid instead of Billy the kid. Uh, Jordan, I need... Your miniature to take pictures of. Well, you're not allowed to have it. No, when you're painting right now. I'm not painting this one. Thank you. Now I will steal it forever. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, Black Dwarf? Yeah. You yelled at your engineering team because they were morons? Eh, well, I mean... Fair. I had a... I had it when I was working at Lutron Electronics. <clears throat> so if anybody out there knows Lutron, they make lighting control systems. And I was the, um, the director, VP level director of what was called Home Systems. And it was a division of the company that made products mainly for large residential automation, mm -hmm. lighting control systems. Yeah. And I was in charge of a product at the time it was called Radio Raw. It was the, it was the first RF controlled lighting wireless lighting control system basically and um it had been out for years the owner of the company developed it it was kind of fading away nobody had ever really done a good job of finding out how to sell it and to train electricians on how to install it because it's a high voltage light switch that has a wireless control component to it so electricians had to install it for people but okay. electricians by and large and this is no offense to electricians they're not really at that point in time we're talking about the late 90s early 2000s electricians were not focused on high-tech deliverables electricians ran wires put in light switches and lighting yep. cans and yep. and electrical consoles and things like that yeah they didn't do home and all of the high-tech stuff. stuff was low voltage and went in with somebody else <clears throat> so our system was very different this one was in particular and so i was put in charge of kind of reinvigorating it if at all possible and so i came up with a business plan on how to make it better and whatever and it succeeded very well so i got elevated to a position of sitting in board meetings and things like that and coming up with new concepts with the company and it was mm. it was it was neat it was fun it was a place i shouldn't have been in but i had done good work for the company and they they delivered back um and i was in a board meeting one time with the president of our group and in that board meeting one of the board members who had been the ex uh ceo of hewlett packard so this, you know, we're in our board for Lutron were people that were at a very high level of business, right? These guys were, you know, would eat you for lunch and spit you out and only say, ooh, once, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm sitting at the table being very quiet as these monsters of business are all talking about what the forecast for the year needs to be. And one of them was really focused on newer forms of automation um, and where we could adapt our company to go with things like touch screens were coming and becoming more available um, and so how could you integrate touch screens onto stuff and things like that? And so at one point in time, the COO of the company looked at me and goes, well, Jason knows a lot about this. We'll let him speak to it. And I was just like, in the, I'm like, just, this is just a random conversation. Nobody prepped me for Great. And, and you know me, I'll just talk. Yeah. Right? Like I, chat. I don't know if you know this about me, but I will just blabber. So I just started talking. I was like, you know, I, I knew I was very schooled in the technologies. I started talking about it. I said that, yes, it would be very good if we built a plan to do this and yada, yada, yada. Well, little did I know that the president of our division um, was not in favor of anything I said. Oh, no. 
because he liked his job to be very known quantity simple and he did not know anything about any of these technologies so he thought i ruined his entire world in one fail swoop because everybody in the room was in agreement with me all of these guys that have operated billions of dollars of companies were like this guy knows what he's talking about i think that should be on one of the top agenda pieces for where we look at investing and things like that and we want a report drawn up by the next uh, board meeting and so when we left, I, of course, I was high on the horse, man. I walked out of there just strutting. I was like, I did my job. You know, people <laughs> love me. This was great. And the president of our company, when we got into the elevator in the engineering building, it was a four-story building, and we got into the elevator to go back up to our floor. And when we got on the elevator, there were four of us from our group in there, two uh, uh, senior engineers, but, um, you know, engineers that were development engineers, myself and then the the my boss and my boss turns around and grabs me by my jacket and slams me into the back wall of the elevator what? and yell, just burns me to the ground yelling at me right and i look this is one of those where where when we talked to somebody said earlier like you know not yelling sometimes has the biggest impact yeah i got inflamed i probably turned every shade of red in the books as this guy not only you know burns me to the ground in the elevator but is like embarrassing me and I'm on, I'm on, I'm riding a high and he's riding an ultimate low and he physically assaults me in the elevator. And I look at him dead in the eyes, his blank face as I could hold it together. And I go, you should probably take your hands off of me before we reach the fourth floor or you're going over the banister. Right. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and you could tell he was like, Oh, I have effed up. And yeah, he, I stepped over the line. And yeah, and he yeah. took his hands off of me and walked away and didn't say a word. It was crazy, dude. It was crazy. What a wild experience. Crazy. The crazier thing is that I didn't leave the company at that point. I actually stuck around. That's that is wild. The high was high enough to make me want to stay. It was only about six or eight months later that I left because the owner of the company flipped me off in a meeting. <laughs> Wait, he did what? He flipped me off. He flipped you off? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, he had big old like basketball player hands too, so it was like very evident what he was doing. That company was run, he was run by a brilliant man. If you know anything about Lutron Electronics, I don't know. Yeah, remind you not to work for Lutron. It, it's a totally different company now, right? Because the old guard, they were old at that time. They probably all died off um, or retired. The owner, I think, passed away. Uh, his name was Joel Spira, and he was a legit rocket scientist. He had been part of the crew that invented, like, propulsion systems for intercontinental ballistic missiles and NASA rockets and stuff. He was an engineer's engineer. He owned patents in, like, every school you could own patents in, almost. He owned a Good. patent for the Japanese pear, which was, like, a hybrid between an apple and a pear. <laughs> what? Yeah, crazy. What? It has like some weird name, and he was the guy that owned the patent and imported him into the United States. Just crazy guy. Wow. Brilliant dude, okay. but as many brilliant dudes are, completely social, socially unacceptable. Like, impossible to speak with. But in, in high levels of engineering conversations, you would have to, eventually you would have to bring your product in front of him to do your final pitch because he was the final say. It was a privately held company, um, and he was the final say. If he didn't like the product, it, not, it did not see the light of day. And so we had a product, uh, we had a meeting with him. And in that meeting, we came up with an idea again with this wireless lighting system. And uh, the president was there, the owner, the COO, all of the top engineers were there from all the divisions because each division would have to present on a quarterly basis their plans and ideas. And so we presented an idea and it took over the whole meeting. Um, Our group presented a way to do this. And this product was kind of one of his babies because he had invented it. And so we sat there until midnight that night. Attorneys had to be called in to be witnesses to the... um, photoing of the whiteboards with all the information because we had come up with a patentable idea. And so at the end of that meeting at like midnight, <clears throat> everybody went home. The president had come up like in his pajamas, you know, his slippers and his pajamas. People had been called out of bed because they thought it was that important. And we were given the marching orders that within three weeks, we had to come up with an operable sample of what we had talked about, which was already precedent. That's pretty tough. Um, but we have good engineers and we could, we could like repurpose equipment to make it work. It didn't have to be the right, uh, PCB. You didn't have to build it from scratch. It didn't have yeah. to be the right component. It just had to work the way we said we thought we could make it work. 
So we took some other components and reprogrammed uh, ICs and things like that. And so it, it, we wound up with this product that worked in two weeks. And so they called a meeting at the, at the owner's office again. They brought in lunch and all that stuff. They brought in the attorneys again. They called everybody in to go over it and see the sample. We got up there, and the first thing you had to do with this guy, because he was not – well, he wasn't – I think he was just forgetful because he had so much on his mind all the time, but he was also really old. And so they, they brought the whiteboards. They had put the whiteboards out in a storage shed with plastic draped on them so that nobody would erase them. So they brought the same exact whiteboards from that meeting two weeks prior in, and I had to get up and present the two weeks prior meeting by reading the whiteboards. And because and, the thing you had to do with them was remind him what we were talking about. Oh, God. So I started at the beginning because we did these the timeline whiteboards. Yeah. Right. And uh, they were huge whiteboards. So uh, I started at the beginning. I said, if you remember, we discussed the opportunity of a product that did X, Y, Z. And we did this and we did this and we did this. And we got to the culmination. And so I'm looking at the whiteboard most of the time and then looking back over my shoulder at the table full of people, whiteboard people, whiteboard people doing my presentation. I get to the end and I go, and that's where we are today. And we'd like to present you with this operable component. And I, when I turned around to say that, he was flipping me off. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's flipping me off. And he goes, do you know what this means? He goes, you probably don't. What college did you go to? So he asked me. It was what university did you graduate from? And that was very demeaning to me because I did not graduate from university. So I'm the only person in the room that does not have a college degree. Yeah. But I am one of the highest ranking engineers in the company. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and uh, I had to say in front of everybody, you know, I mean, imagine how embarrassing that is. I said, well, you know that he knew this too. You know, yeah. I was like, so I said, well, you know that I don't have a degree. You know, <laughs> I was like, but I do have a lot of experience and I've made you a lot of money. <laughs> which there you go. did not please him when yeah. I said that, by the way. And uh, the COO stood up immediately and came to my defense and was like, no, you got to remember, Mr. Spira, that this is what we talked about, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, no, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. He's like, I can't believe you've wasted my time and your time making this happen. <laughs> it's like you were the one who asked us to do this. It's like dealing with Sybil. Like, I'm like, dude, the only reason I work here is because you guys tell me what to do. Like, literally, you guys tell me that you needed this, and I spent the last two weeks busting our ass. And the engineers that had done all the work were in the room, too, and you could just see the color drain out of their face. It was horrible. I bet they were pissed. Horrible. So I quit that day, by the way. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. That's the day I left. I, uh, I walked out of the room. My boss knew. It was a different <laughs> boss than the one in the elevator by this time. Yeah. And uh, my boss knew that that was it. Yeah, he was like, all right, he's done. He goes, hey, let's go grab some drinks. <laughs> he came up to my desk, and I got in the car with him, and I went out, and he bought alcohol at 3 p.m., and we drank alcoholic beverages, as adults do, at 3 p.m., I guess, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and, uh, and he begged and pleaded. He goes, I can tell already that we may have just lost you. You know, what do I got to do? And he offered to set me up in California because he knew my wife at the time was wanting to move to California. So he was like, you know, I'll set you up in California. You can work remotely. What do we got to do? I said, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Like, that's not how I want to be treated. But that had a big mark on me for how I knew I never wanted to make anybody feel who ever did anything valuable for me. What a shitter, right? Yeah. 3 p.m. is a late start in PA. Well, you're from PA, so yes. I was not a PA native, so I did not know this. <laughs> I learned it, though, because on Fridays we would go eat at the, at the, the cheesesteak place that was like out in the middle of the country. And it wasn't that anybody really wanted cheesesteaks. It's that they served cheap pitchers of beer at the cheesesteak place at lunchtime. <laughs> and on Friday you could get away with two-hour lunches because nobody cared. Man, that's funny. I've had a... Not quite to that extent, but I've definitely had a similar, similar interaction with with somebody before people that i know uh yeah i think we've had a conversation about it before. okay yeah that's yeah. a shame you hate about it in this industry. you feel this industry should be more fun than that <laughs> you know this was a a white collared engineering firm where i i probably liked maybe 30 the people 30 percent of the people i met and worked yeah. with so i was like you know it was a little bit more under i don't know that it's ever understandable but it was expected maybe which is a shame even if you weren't his worst employee that's not cool even if you were his worst employee, that's not cool. Oh, yeah, it's still, like I said, it's still human, right? This, just to go, this is kind of like a Therapy Thursday talk, right? This is one of those things where I don't care who you're dealing with. They deserve at least a modicum of respect, even if the first thought you have is, I should run this person over with my car. <laughs> you know? You should see how you were treated at the carnival? So I don't think that, okay, so this is, and this is not fair to say this, but in my thoughts of working at a carnival... I feel like that's probably one of the worst jobs on the planet. 
Uh, I'm probably going to be done here shortly. He's finishing up. Yeah. It's not, it won't be like yesterday's finishing up. We're at 6 o'clock. We're like, uh. No. No. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I got to bounce. Uh, um, is everybody gone? Okay. Okay. Have they, did they ever let us know if Carter's meeting him here in the morning? Or do I need to meet him here in the morning? Uh, I have no idea. I should talk to Gabe. <laughs> All right, gang. Uh, I'm out of here. I got to go make sure that I uh, clarify some stuff for LVO because the team leaves tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'll let uh, Jordan close up I'm, the show. Yeah, I'm going to be out as well because I need to get stuff ready for tomorrow Jordan myself. Jordan has to leave. So. <laughs> I have to leave. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, okay, I'll put up some links here in a second. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of it. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm going to throw up some links here real quick, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us, or me, because I was here alone. They left me here alone with you guys. It was a blast. I had a great time. Um, let's throw out the, uh, store link. That's not how you spell store. All right. Here we got the... Discord. All right, everyone. Threw out some links here. Uh, for those of you who are still here from the raid or are new here, welcome to Monument Hobbies live stream. Uh, you guys got to enjoy a little snippet of what we do here. Uh, we stream five days a week, Monday through Friday, from two o'clock to four o'clock p.m. Uh, on Mountain Standard Time. So it's four twenty-five for us right now. So you guys could do the math, figure out what time it is. Um, we threw up a whole bunch of links here for you. We have the store link, which is where you can find all the fantastic paint that we've been using on stream today, uh, from Pro Krill Monument Hobbies, which is who we are. You can see. Uh, we have the FLGS link. If you want to find a local game store to support near you, we would love to see you do that. Uh, our FLGS link has a link to all of the 2,200 some odd various stores that we have around the world. Uh, so find somewhere local to you to support. Because uh, you will also, in turn, be supporting us. Uh, we will love you for that. Uh, we have our Discord link. We have a very active Discord full of three, over 3,000 active participants. All people hanging out, talking shop, painting miniatures, talking about nerd stuff. It's a blast. It's a great place to learn, hang out, find new answers to your questions about painting, and have a good time. Uh, we also have our YouTube link up here as well. This is a place where you can catch all of our old live streams. Uh, we do keep them live on Twitch for a short period of time before we transfer them over to YouTube long term. So make sure that if you do want to catch any of our streams that you missed, that you check the Twitch stream, and then you can check the YouTube for all of our old icon, well, older archived streams. Um, we also have all of our shorts and our video content on there, which is all of our tutorial videos, things like that, uh, which we're expanding all the time. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We're going to find somebody to raid. Uh, after this, so stay tuned for that. Say hello to who we're raiding, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Adios. Monument. Good evening.
How we doing? How was stream? Who do we have this evening as well? That is, that is the... The other question, because the Monument crew is growing. There's a whole host of people over there now. Hey, Jordan, you're right, mate. How was the stream? What were you up to? Tell us all about it. For those coming in, if you are new here, good evening. My name's Aaron, a UK based mini painter. Currently slaving away over a Horus Ascended, getting there one piece at a time. But he's starting to actually resemble something now, as opposed to just a pile of unpainted bits. He says as he is struggling with the concept of white tech. There we go. Ta -da! So yeah, he's starting to look like a mini. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey, Merlin, you're right, man. Been there, done that, so much trim. May it just never ends. Every time I think I have found all the trim, I find more. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely mini, and I, as much as I will complain about it, I love it. But sweet Jesus, there's so much trim. Oh, she's monster trim. I know, because I don't learn. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. It's been one of those streams. <laughs> All kinds of things going tits up. Uh, go to the jet, LVO, pack in time. Oh, of course, yeah. No worries, mate. Have a good time. I'll see you soon. See you at Adepticon. Uh, do Just done 7,000 points. Yeah, d sorry, man. It's... We had to reset the bot earlier and reset some of the alerts, and it's all been a bit off since. I was really confused when you were like, 